Happy New Year! A big thank you for all of your support this year. I really, truly appreciate it. Let's look forward to 2020. What is up, Coral people? My name is Remy. If you're new here, this is the Bahama Lama Coral YouTube channel. And if at any point during this video, you like what you see, go ahead and like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you are notified whenever I upload new content. That's the best way to support this channel right now is to hit subscribe. So thank you for doing that. If you're going to, if you're logged into YouTube, you got all that pulled up and you're like, I like it, subscribe it. I'm gonna make it happen. Currently subscribing to the channel is the best way to support it because we're just all about growth right now. We're definitely growers. And I'd love it if you stuck through this entire video, but I am doing this video mainly to document the goals that I have for 2020 and kind of looking back at 2019 and seeing where I came from. And I love doing this stuff at the end of the year, reflection and looking forward to the next year and improving and being better. You have been an integral part of this entire process. And I really want to reward those that have been with me from the beginning. So. Look forward to an Instagram contest of some sort, and it's not gonna be like anything you have to jump through hoops. It's gonna be basically just commenting on something. You don't have to tag 400 friends. It's like there's no hoops to jump through because I really don't want to use this contest to grow Instagram or grow YouTube. I really just want to thank you for all of the support over the past year. And I'm also really close to 2,000 followers on Instagram. It's crazy to think about. All right, let's look back before we look forward. This channel, in conjunction with my Instagram channel, basically started out of my personal need to share what was going on in the reefing hobby. I would post photos on my Remy radio account, which is my kind of professional radio broadcast account. And I would post pictures of, uh, you know, my coral and nobody cared. It would get no likes. And I just, I, I knew that it was the wrong place to share that kind of thing. So that's where I started the Bahama Lama Coral Instagram and YouTube channel. Because honestly, when I'm talking to my friends, they don't want to hear about pumps and gear and why Scott Crow from OSA has so much energy. With these accounts, I can post photos and get better at taking photos. And I can post video and I can get better at taking video. And all along, I knew that I could get some feedback from my fellow reefers. So off I went and when I was 12 or 13, I got my first video camera. And I've literally been shooting video ever since then. Even in my radio career right now, we shoot video almost every day. In fact, that's like what sets us apart from a lot of the other shows in town and across the country is the amount of video that we put out on our show. So this channel actually started off as the Remy Radio Show. I did over 200 videos and most of those are unlisted now for a very good reason. Hey, it's Remy from the all new Remy Radio Show 2.0. Just wanted to get you an update here, uh, let you know that I'm looking for an entertainment correspondent. Are you funny? Are you witty? Do you have all the latest news and gossip on pop culture? I love you so much. I really do. I was just learning. I was trying things out. I was doing new things that I'd never done before. The channel went dormant back in 2010 or so, and then in 2018, I resurrected it as the Bahama Lama Coral YouTube channel. Initially, like a lot of creators, I struggled so hard with the amount of ideas that I had, putting what I thought was going to be the proper amount of work into each video, and then just never actually doing anything. I would stew on a video idea for months and then nothing would come of it. And then in the middle of September 2019, after some pretty good advice, I just started putting out videos. I freaking put them out. They weren't as polished as I wanted them to be. They weren't as awesome as I'd like them to be. But what you find out through this whole thing is that it has nothing to do with the end product and everything to do with the process. Much like our reef tanks, it's all about the process, right? Slow and steady wins the race. So if you go back to some of my older videos, you'll see that it's very incremental. You'll see little bits of changes along the way up until now, 
where I've come up with a little bit of a process. This is all gonna look different by 2021, I guarantee you. But every single time I am doing a video, I'm trying to do one thing that is better than the last one. And that's how we progress. And that's how some of these huge YouTube channels became huge. They got better. With all that said, if you've been thinking about starting a YouTube channel or posting some stuff on Instagram, just freaking do it. Just start. Turn on the camera and go. You need no editing skills, I promise you. You can just turn on your phone and just do one continuous shot. People will watch because we're all intrigued what everybody else has in their tanks. Another thing you'll find out is if you really like taking videos or not. It's not for everybody. I promise you there is so much stuff that happens on the back end of this with the edits and the graphics and all that kind of stuff that make people not really enjoy making YouTube content. And that's okay. It can be as complex or as simple as you want it. All right, let's get to some hard and fast goals for 2020. 2020. Looking forward now in 2020. 2020. I would like to make content that makes people want to subscribe, right? I don't wanna have to force subscription down your throat. I don't want you to have to click it because you feel bad for me. I want you to click it because you actually genuinely enjoy the content. So my goal for 2020 is to get 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. My other goal for YouTube is to make at least 50 videos in 2020. That leaves me a couple weeks of wiggle room. So if I get bogged down with stuff or get sick or something like that, you know, I got a week of wiggle room and I can always make that up by multiple posts in a week. Just making sure that I get 50 videos. And hopefully I feel so inspired that we get 50, 60, maybe even 70 videos in the year 2020. 2020. And I would love to travel to a coral conference. Is that Reefapalooza? Is that Macna? Is that Aquashella? Is it maybe Frag Farmers Market in New England? You go to one of the smaller events and then you web out. You go see Scott at OSA Corals. You go see the Reef News Network guys, things like that. I really wanna do a couple different trips this year and just go meet people and see people in their natural habitat and their reefs. All right, here's the big one. So as far as my tanks are concerned, the number one thing that I wanna fix in 2020 is efficiency. I really need to take a hard and fast look at my equipment. I wanna make sure that all my pumps and all my gear are as efficient as possible. This house that we're in runs on all electricity. There is no gas at all, no gas line. It's unlike any other house that I've ever lived in. So normally you'd have a gas bill, you'd have an electric bill, and this one just has an electric bill. So it's, uh, it's a pretty pricey electric bill in comparison to years past and none of this stuff really helps that situation and maybe get some more efficiency when it comes to power consumption as well also all those nagging things that i only see whenever i'm doing a water change you know those things like uh the rat's nest of cords that's going on over here or you know cleaning of pumps things like that i really want to make sure that i get on a schedule which i've never done before of cleaning my pumps and making sure that all the gear is good to go the power heads, the skimmer, the return pump, all of that stuff needs a regular maintenance program. I'm guilty. I haven't done that in the past, but in 2020, we're getting it done. Cleanliness, a clean sump. Right now, sump, not so clean. We moved in 2018 and it was kind of a run and gun thing where I never moved with a tank before. And so I consolidated three tanks down into this frag tank and all of the rock from those previous systems went into the sump because I didn't want to get rid of it. It's live rock. It's valuable in bacteria and pods and all that kind of stuff. Well, now it's just created an amazing detritus trap for my refugium. It has also led to me never being able to trust any kind of testing that I do because it's a nitrate factory. It's a phosphate factory. It's Obviously, there's a lot of algae growth in my tank. We'll figure it all out, but I really want to start off with a clean sump. One of my favorite episodes from the Reef News Network, if you don't listen to that podcast, you totally should, was with Robert Farnsworth, formerly of Marine Depot, now of Bulk Reef Supply. Congratulations, Robert. He talked about how he runs a clean sump. The only thing that's in his sump 
is Ketomorpha or Chetomorpha or Ketomorpha or however you say it. And there's not a whole lot of rock, if any. I just need something that's a little easier to maintain. I like all the rock down there, but it's kind of just all piled together and there's detritus in all of these little nooks and crannies. I want the detritus to pile up in one spot so it's easy to siphon out every time I do a water change. Another issue that I'm facing is do I go bigger in 2020 or do I embrace a more minimalistic setup? I have a space problem. The 45 gallon frag tank is too small for what I've got going on right now. I can get a larger frag tank, which I've actually thought about going from, there's a tile floor right here that you can't really see, all the way to the wall and just put a tank that, you know, I, I believe that'd be about six to eight feet of length and get a new tank, or I could get rid of a lot of coral. I'm leaning more towards the latter. See, I bought one polyp of Nirvana zoanthids back in like 2017 or something, and that thing has grown like wildfire. Welcome to the new Pandora. I now have 20 to 30 plugs just covered with Nirvana, plus frag rack that's covered in Nirvana. I don't know what to do with it. I'm assuming that if I got rid of all of that, it would free up a lot of space. Do you want some? No? Okay. There's also a little part of me that would like to have high-end collector stuff, just a minimal amount of really high-end quality coral. Currently, I just have an abundance of your common coral. And I'm not knocking anything common. The bread and butter corals have a place in this hobby. They're hardy, they can be in many different tank situations and parameters, and they thrive in a lot of different tanks. And that's why they are so common in this hobby. They're, they're the bread and butter corals for a reason. By ridding my tank of all of those kinds of corals, you know, your bird's nest, your, uh, your common zoanthids, those kinds of things, I could really free up a lot of space. Now, I don't sell my coral for a profit at this point. I really don't ever see myself selling the coral for a profit. Any money that I make in the hobby just goes right back in to that tank, whether it be salt or new gear or a new piece, something like that. So it's usually just kind of circulating into one of these two tanks right now. In the beginning, I think what crosses every hobbyist's mind is, oh, I've got all this, this stuff, it's growing in my tanks and it's all worth money. I could just make a, I can make a killing off of all of this coral. So you just start stocking up your tank with everything. For a few, they'll go on, they'll create a business out of the basement, they'll end up shipping coral, they might even end up with a business model at the end of this. For most people, like me, you'll just end up acquiring a crap ton of coral and then never actually being able to sell it for any real money or profit, so it just kind of grows in your tank until you don't know what to do with it. So I'm definitely leaning more towards getting rid of coral, keeping the same system. We'll see what happens in 2020. Collaborations. I'd love to collaborate with some big brands and of course, other YouTubers. The biggest thing I'd like to explore when it comes to collaborations is long, meaningful relationships with YouTubers and companies. In radio, brand deals or influencer deals are called endorsements and we've had clients on our show for the last five to 10 years. And those are the long, meaningful relationships that I talk about. I know who the owners are. We've gone to lunch several times. We send each other Christmas cards. And we back the product because we believe in the product. For me, it's not about having 450 sponsors who gave me a product to try once. And yeah, I've tried a couple of those and it just felt weird. For me, it's about a mutually beneficial collaborative, creative relationship that can grow over the years. Trust me, people can see through the influencer bit. And we could be a year or two away from this right now. I'm, I'm talking like it's gonna happen next week, but literally, 
I mean, as, as this video is being recorded, I have 1,300 and some subscribers on YouTube. That's not a ton, but I just wanna put it out there because it's always been on my radar. As far as collaborations go with other YouTubers, I would love to collaborate with Moki, The Inappropriate Reefer, uh, Jake Adams from Reef Builders. I think that would be a lot of fun. Maybe going out to Tidal Gardens and seeing Than's brand new coral house. And of course, I would love to do a collaboration with George Oh, you know him as Coralfish 12G. And maybe even some creators that are outside of the hobby, like uh, I'm a big fan of Becky and Chris. They live in Buffalo, New York, and have a great YouTube channel. If you haven't checked it out, you gotta go check it out right now. You know, it's wish list stuff. It's it's stuff that, you know, I can I can dream about right now, but I'm putting it out there and I think that you should do the same when it comes to all of your goals in 2020. Do you have any reefing resolutions for the new year? Go ahead and drop those in the comment section below. It has been a fad for a while, and I've even said it over the past several years. I don't make resolutions, resolutions don't work, yada, yada, yada. But let's face it, whenever a new year hits, you're like, okay, I got a clean slate in front of me, and I can accomplish all of these things if I really want to. Just don't do it for a couple weeks in January and then drop it. I'm not looking forward to the influx of people at the gym, but I know that they'll probably drop off after about a month, so it's okay. As the great Mufasa once said, You are more than what you have become. How will you better yourself in 2020? 2020. How will you better your reef tanks? I've got some lofty goals for 2020, and if you stuck through this entire video, thank you so much. I sincerely appreciate it, and you know, I've got lofty goals for the subscriber count. So, you know, if you want to start now and hit subscribe, maybe like this video, leave a comment down below. Let me know what's going on in 2020 for you. What are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to not having a sore throat and not having this random cough. That would be fantastic. Can I just kick that? I've been taking Mucinex and Tylenol for weeks. What's going on? Do I need an antibiotic? Am I dying slowly? What is happening in my life? I am so pumped for the next decade. I'm so pumped for 2020. 2020. And thank you for coming along with me. You see all these frag plugs? These are from Inland Corals. They're ceramic. These are the best plugs and they're so cheap. It's like 200 plugs for like 25 bucks. It's like one of the best deals. I'll leave a link in the description. This isn't sponsored, there's really good plugs. Oh yeah, <clears throat> happy new year. Let's, uh, let's go pop some bottles and